My big question, I think probably it's an obvious question that a lot of people are asking right now, is will the student movement and the other sort of more active civil society movement and other groups that have really uh, been prominent in the last year and a half to two years, will they, uh, can, can the KMT and to a lesser extent the DPP succeed in co-opting or even managing uh, this new force, uh, you know, because it's a possibility. You could see from uh, Mr. Lean's comments there, he actually seems even in, in those uh, brief remarks, somewhat angry against the establishment. And so you have to wonder about the possibility whether the newly activated civil society in Taiwan, more active than in probably 20 years, at least more active as independent from the political parties, will it uh, be co-opted or managed successfully or will it remain outside the political mainstream as a kind of free-floating, unincorporated force? Uh, the students actually, I think, I mean, this is really obviously important, and in particular, the student movement is because they proved themselves to be remarkably savvy. I mean, whether you agree with what they did or not, they are, were very uh, knowledgeable about public relations and about imagery and, and so on. And so how to get their message across in a dramatic way, but yet not quite go so far that they could really turn a large uh, proportion of the Taiwan population or, or people in other countries off. I mean, it's, they, they were actually quite radical, of course. It's not every day that legislatures are occupied for, for weeks at a time. And yet, in some, in some ways, though, they were still also quite reasonable and, uh, and within a certain boundary, and I think that's why they backed down at the end, cleaned up, uh, or process probably right now, cleaning up the Leaf IUN, and will we'll go back. But you can't call them moderates, though. Not only, be, I mean, they're still on the radical side, because not only because they occupy the legislature, but because also, even more importantly, they strongly criticize both the KMT and the DPP, especially the KMT, of course, but also the, the DPP. In fact, you heard Mr. Lean here just uh, a little while ago arguing that there's something fundamentally wrong with Taiwan's democratic political institutions. It's not, it's not just the, parties, the party system. It's not just this particular policy. Uh, this particular acrimonious debate over the trade and uh, services agreement is just something deeply flawed uh, in Taiwan's political uh, institutions, those students seem to think, and they seem determined, energetic, self-confident. You really exuded a lot of self-confidence, I thought, there, uh, in trying to turn back the tide of this reversal, this de-democratization that I think they say. Now, now, critically, this doesn't take place in a vacuum. There have been a number of polls over the last 15 or so years conducted by people like those associated with the Asian barometer, some really high profile academics. Zhu Yunhan in Taiwan, uh, Professor Andrew Nathan of Columbia here in the United States and, and others have conducted uh, polls uh, comparing uh, attitudes in various democracies in Asia. And it's been, it was kind of surprising initially to me, but now I'm used to it. Taiwanese, for going back a decade or more, have tended to be more cynical about their democratic political institutions than other people and other democracies in Asia. I mean, you can imagine why. I mean, you've got the Chinese problem there. I mean, it's a constant press, pr a source of pressure and stress. You have a, a declining GDP growth rate, which is only natural once you reach a certain wealth level, as, as Taiwan has done. Although, of course, a lot of people in Taiwan wonder why South Korea is now passing Taiwan. You also have the increasing inequality and so on like that. But in any case, for a variety of reasons, this student movement, which is uh, ex expressing real concern about kind of uh, um, retrenchment or uh, kind of withering away of Taiwan's democratic institutions and values is not taking place in a vacuum. A lot of people are skeptical, and people will even say in polls, in some of these East Asian democracy polls, it's better to have a firm, strong government than a democracy. What's more important is getting things done than playing by rules and so on like that. You can look those polls up. I mean, this is, uh, in comparison to other countries in Asia, it's quite uh, striking. So, and I think this probably uh, undergirds uh, why President Ma's approval ratings have been so remarkably and surprisingly low. I mean, it's, it seems very strange. I've never seen uh, any really compelling explanation for how somebody could win two elections pretty handily, especially the first one, and then really rapidly after that see their approval ratings fall to such low levels. I mean, I don't know that that's precedented in any other democratic country. So it strikes me there's something deep, 
uh, deeply problematic about Taiwan's political culture right now. And I, yeah, I don't know the solution, but I think uh, the student movement uh, reflects that. And so it should just be dismissed and criticized like they're a bunch of bad people who got out of control and should know their place. I mean, I think you really need to look at this as a serious social political phenomenon and take it, uh, and take it seriously and think very, very deeply about what uh, that means and what should be done about it. Students have been simply the most vocal, dramatic elements in Taiwan to express this kind of cynicism or political disillusionment or disaffection. It, it would not have resonated. You wouldn't have had that big t turnout uh, of demonstrators last weekend or a weekend and a half ago if you didn't have uh, a lot more people in society concerned about this. So it's going to be a very difficult task for the KMT and the DPP to manage or let alone co-op these students as they grow older. And uh, many of them perhaps become civil society activists uh, and, uh, and join others who are already uh, active in civil society. You don't want to keep uh, really deeply dissatisfied people outside political institutions, outside the political mainstream. It's not ultimately good for, for political stability and or for that matter for cross-strait relations because really and uh, moving toward the conclusion of my own remarks here you know the, the problem is structural there's no denying it's uh, the fact the china factor china constantly puts pressure on taiwan put pressure on uh, president ma to, to sign this agreement actually if you read uh, richard bush you know richard bush former director of the it has a wonderful book that came out last spring called uncharted straight trying to trace through various possible scenarios for taiwan's future china's and so on like that he predicted that come last summer uh, when they started talking about the trade and services agreement by then then the whole all this momentum that had been built up over the last, previous five years would suddenly grind to a halt because as he put it that's the point at which all the low-hanging fruit will have been picked. And so it looks like uh, that is actually, actually coming back. And it, it's difficult because I think Stan alluded to this, or, or maybe I think Pat actually alluded to this point. I mean, if you're President Ma or if a DPP uh, candidate becomes president in 2016, you really have a responsibility to take care of Taiwan's national security. And the number one overwhelming threat is this constant pressure from China. So, and one of the things they're going to demand is increasing integration. I think Stan's exactly right. The end game for them is unification. You're going to have to really play a, a delicate balancing act to uh, be able to manage the pressures from China on the one hand, and yet still satisfy most of your people. At least not so uh, alienate, strongly alienate uh, subsections of the population that they're motivated to take dramatic actions like taking over uh, the legislature. I mean, that's, that's really a sign of something fundamentally wrong, I think, happening right now in Taiwan. Not, not th I'm not saying the students are wrong. I'm saying something wrong with the overall political culture, political uh, environment. So um, I'll just close by saying, you know, it's possible Taiwan could end up, if, if this isn't managed well, and if, there's, if President Ma, obviously other people in the KMT have already reached out to the students. I think President Ma has also reached out to a certain extent, but has not been as enthusiastic about it as other figures in the KMT, as I'm sure everybody here knows. But it, unless more of this is done and a more systematic effort is made to really think through about how to secure a broad social consensus for moving forward with relations with China, you have to worry about Taiwan actually becoming like Hong Kong in the sense that you have a lot of really angry people today in Hong Kong really, really negative toward China and really feeling like their future is no longer in their control. And so that's making Hong Kong increasingly difficult to govern. And what does it do? Obviously, it invites the attention of Beijing. So you know, be, there's all this writing about uh, how China is actually deploying triads, gangs, to break up uh, pro-democracy demonstrations in Hong Kong, increasingly intervening in Hong Kong, try to bring it under control. You don't want that to happen, obviously, in Taiwan. Obviously, that'd be a really terrible thing to happen. You, you can hope, we all obviously hope that China will view these events with wisdom and restraint, but you can't count on that. So it's gonna be up to people, I think, in Taiwan to try to patch things back together and get back on track. Thanks. Thank you.